In this episode, we're going to briefly discuss the connection between sunlight and cardiovascular disease, particularly hypertension and blood pressure. Now, first things first, what are cardiovascular diseases? Well, these are diseases that affect the heart and the blood vessels. So diseases all relating to our ability to pump blood around our body and to get blood to our body parts. So this is a very serious and important category of disease because if we can't pump blood around our bodies, we, that means that we can't get oxygen to our, to our organs, to our tissues and organs, and that means those tissues and organs can malfunction and die. So these are some examples of some of these cardiovascular diseases. You've got heart attack, heart failure, cardiomyopathy, rheumatic heart disease, erythemia, angina pectoris, stroke, and coronary heart disease. Now, according to the World Health Organization, cardiovascular diseases are the leading cause of death globally. An estimated 18 million people died from these diseases in 2019. That represents about a third of all global deaths. And of those deaths, almost all of them were due to heart attack and stroke, 85% of them. Interestingly, over three quarters of these deaths take place in low and middle income countries, presumably because these countries uh, access to you know, preventative medicine is lower in some of those countries. I, I would imagine that's the reason for that. And then finally, out of the 17 million premature deaths, that is deaths under the age of 70 due to non-communicable diseases in 2019, i.e. diseases that are not to do with some kind of virus or, you know, bacteria that can be passed from person to person, 38% of those deaths, these premature deaths, were caused by cardiovascular diseases. So, it's an astonishingly important category of disease, and it's, it's, an, it's a really important area for health that we need to understand. And what I'm going to now suggest in the next few slides is, uh, is that this is particularly important for black people in the diaspora, in the African diaspora. So here's, an, here's a, a statistic, a stark statistic. This is from the 1980s and 90s, so it's... You know, it's slightly dated, but the, but the same rates will still apply, as we'll see in a minute. This is showing the prevalence of cardiovascular disease amongst these different ethnic groups in the United States. And you'll see here that whereas the rates of cardiovascular disease are around about between a quarter and a third for Mexican-Americans and whites, it's it was more like 40% for African-Americans. And again, this is in the late 80s and, and mid up to the mid-1990s. So much higher rate of much, much higher prevalence of cardiovascular disease amongst African Americans. Looking at more, more up-to-date data, you see that when you look at the mortality rates, these, this, this means that the, the, the likelihood that people are going to die from cardiovascular diseases, black adults are 32% more likely to die from these diseases than other ethnic groups in the United States. Now, it's good to see that the, the mortality rates have gone down for cardiovascular diseases over the, the last 20 years or so. However, again, the rates, the mortality rates amongst black people, non-Hispanic black people in, a, in, in the United States are a third higher than any other group. So what are, some of the, what are some of the risk factors for cardiovascular diseases? Well, as you can see on screen here, you've got Unhealthy diet, lack of exercise, obesity, smoking, mental stress, stress, excessive alcohol, abnormal cholesterol, high blood sugar, and high blood pressure. These are these are the main risk factors for the likelihood of, of us getting a cardiovascular disease. I want to focus on high blood pressure in particular because this is going to be the gateway now to talk about sunlight. High blood pressure, I believe, is the main risk factor for cardiovascular disease. If someone has high blood pressure, also known as hypertension, then they are much more likely to get cardiovascular disease than, than, than those with lower blood pressure. And unfortunately, there is an ethnic component to the blood pressure, again, the prevalence of high blood pressure. Again, looking at these statistics from the uh, well, from various various sources there. You can I put links to all of these studies in the presentation. You can find them in the in the show notes as well. Hypertension prevalence by sex and race slash ethnicity. You'll see here that 
the gray lines there, the gray bars there, the prevalence for African-Americans, non-Hispanic blacks is around about 41% in comparison again to around about 25 to 30% for, for the other, other ethnic groups. So again, astonishingly high rates of cardiovascular, of, of hypertension amongst African-Americans in particular. So let's talk about sunlight. Many studies have shown, and it's, it's been shown quite consistently and conclus conclusively, that there tends to be a, a, an inverse correlation association between sun exposure and blood pressure and cardiovascular disease in observational studies. And just, just to clarify, an observational study is a study where you look at a group of people and you just follow them over a period of time and you... you you note down, okay, this group of people were more likely to get uh, cardiovascular disease, in this case, than this other group of people. It's different to an interventional study where you might get a group of people, give some of them, uh, you know, get some of them to act in a certain way, get some of the other group to act in a certain way, and then you can start to see whether the intervention, i.e. telling them to act in a certain way or eat a certain thing or take a certain supplement had an effect on the likelihood of them, them getting a particular disease. But these are observational studies. This was a this is a review of observational studies, and it found that the majority of studies that it looked at found a negative association between blood pressure and blood pressure and cardiovascular disease on one hand, and sun exposure or ultraviolet exposure, meaning that the high when one is high, i.e. when sun exposure or ultraviolet exposure is high, then blood pressure tended to be low. Another study here, 2016 study here, looked at uh, looked at the the blood pressure, average blood pressure measured in specific countries, and correlated that with the latitude of those specific countries. These, just to point out, these are from 1980 because the the authors of the study pointed out that after 1980 antihypertensive drugs, i.e. medication to bring blood pressure down, was much more available from 1980 onwards. So looking at 19, 1980, look, you know, removes that, that, that element or that, that dynamic. And you see here that the further away, away you go from the equator, so zero is the equator, the further away you go from the equator in latitude, the higher the latitude, the further away you are from the equator, the higher the average blood pressure in that particular country was. And these are, in, you know, you can see the number of dots there. That's a, a whole bunch of countries that were part of the study. And it provides more evidence, more suggestive evidence that exposure to sunlight and UV, ultraviolet sunlight in particular helps to lower blood pressure. Another line of evidence is that when you look at seasonal variations in blood pressure here, in this case, this is the United States. You look at seasonal variations, you find that blood pressure it tends to be higher during the winter months and lower during the summer months. Those dips are the summer months and the peaks are the winter months. And again, what's, what's unfortunate to see here is that the average blood pressure amongst black people in America tends to be much higher than the average blood pressure amongst, amongst uh, white people. And the, point to, the thing to point out here is that the uh, I believe that Higher blood pressure is counted as around about 100 and is, I think it's about 140 um, systolic high blood pressure. Systolic blood pressure is around about 140, and you're seeing here that even when the blood pressures are supposed to, are lower, you're still comfortably over the, the the cutoff point for hypertension. Now, I just want to talk about a couple of studies to finish up with that have have gone into a little bit more detail on this to 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 show the. The, the correlation. And this is a study by Richard B. Weller and, and, and his team in 2020 that's called Does Incident Solar Ultraviolet Radiation Lower Blood Pressure? So this was published in the Journal of American of the American Heart Association. And you'll see here, I'll just read a bit of the abstract here. They say that they studied 342,457 patients. 36% of them were black, 64% were white at 2,178 US dialysis centers over three years. So it's an observational study over three years, very large study, which is its main strength. 
Incident ultraviolet radiation. When you see incident, that's just talking about the ultraviolet radiation that exists at a particular point in time as, as measured by a, you know, a, a device. Incident UV radiation and temperature data for each clinic location were retrieved from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration database. And then I'll skip this next few sentences, basically talking about they, uh, they created a model where they adjusted for the temperature, sex and age, body mass index, serum calcium and other covariates for each of those locations. And then they, you know, they used fancy maths in order to work out, you know, uh, what impact, what correlation there was between sun exposure and, and systolic blood pressure. And then the last sentence there is the important one. Temperature. UVA and UVB, that's ultraviolet A and ultraviolet B radiation from the sun, were all linearly and inversely associated with systolic blood pressure. That means that the higher the UVA slash UVB and temperature, the lower the systolic blood pressure was. And what they also found was in that last sentence, as you can see, is that this relationship remains systolic statistically significant after correlating for temperature, meaning that the when you compare locations where the, the temperature, the average temperature in that location was the same, but one area was brighter than that other area, the area that was brighter but had the same average temperature, still still the people there still tended to have slightly lower blood pressure than those in the uh, in the darker area that still had the same temperature. That's, so that's important, an important point to recognize that it's, this isn't a function only of the fact that when you're in a warmer climate, your blood pressure goes down. It's also the fact that it's to do with the actual brightness, the actual photons, the actual exposure to the actual light that has an impact on blood pressure. And one more study as well from, again, from Richard B. Weller and uh, another team, Building on that study and other studies that they'd done, they tried to see if they could uh, use photobiomodulation devices. Basically, uh, if they could shine ultraviolet light onto people for two weeks using devices and see if that would have an impact on, 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 the, on the people's blood pressure. So again, just to read very quick, very briefly from, from, from this abstract, latitude and season determine exposure to ultraviolet radiation and correlate with population blood pressure. In other words, uh, there's more sunlight in the summer. Uh, there's also more sunlight in uh, when you're close to the equator and less sunlight when you're further away, further, away, further away from the equator. And this is particularly the case for ultraviolet radiation. Infrared radiation, infrared light doesn't vary anywhere near as much as ultraviolet radiation does, either seasonally or through the different times of the day and by latitude. Evidence for vitamin D causing this relationship is inconsistent and temperature changes are only partly responsible for blood pressure variation as we saw in the other study. In healthy individuals, a single irradiation with 20 joules per, cent square, per square centimeter UVA mobilizes nitric oxide from cutaneous stores to the circulation, causes arterial vasodilation, and elicits a transient fall in blood pressure. We therefore tested whether low-dose daily UVA phototherapy might be an effective treatment for mild hypertension. And what they basically they found that it didn't have an impact. There's a small study, 13 people, they, they shined these particular lamps on them and they found that there, though there was a slight transient drop in blood pressure immediately after UVA irradiation, there was no significant uh, longer lasting drop in, in, uh, in, in blood pressure. And the last sentence I'll just read here, once once, once daily low-dose UVA does not control mildly elevated blood pressure, although it produces a transient fall shortly after irradiation, more frequent exposure to UVA may be effective. Alternatively, UVB, which photo-releases more nitric oxide from the skin, could be tried. So... The point for me really is that it's all about sunlight. It's not about trying to get some special device that you can shine yourself on. This is one thing I find in this whole field of sunlight and health is that people are always wanting to go to devices and, and gadgets. It's always like it's almost like the 
the, the, the default is let's try and create a product that people can buy to fix themselves. But really, guys, the key to all of this is just get out in the sun. That's my message over all of these episodes. Get out in the sun, maximize your exposure to sunlight, and that will sort out your cardiovascular health.